Hey, what's up? This is Don, and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. And today, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create a crystal texture, just like this one, in my latest intro project on this logo right here. So let's uh, jump into C4D, and I'm just gonna make a really quick, simple logo. Let's start off with a cog wheel, and I'm gonna put the teeth number down to five, and I'm gonna get a star, and also give it five points, and um, maybe reduce the radius, the radiuses, the radii. I don't know. Okay, now I'm gonna get both of these hit C to make them editable then right click and connect and delete and let's grab a, an extrude nerves and uh, you know I'm doing this uh, tutorial you know showing you how you would have this on a logo but you know the techniques which I'm gonna show you can be transferred onto any object really so I'm gonna hit C to make this editable but before I do I uh, completely forgot what I, what I was gonna show you the surface of this um, logo is just flat and smooth all around uh, and if you take a look at this surface over here you can see that it's not only the texture that's getting this look uh, the surface itself is um, deformed and jagged it's not completely flat uh, even looking directly from the front you can still see some areas where it's lighter because they're sort of you know bending in a different direction and catching different uh, highlights and so on so we need to give this logo the same treatment we need to add some segments to this face and then use an effector to deform them and uh, get like a coarse crystalline look on the surfaces so I'm going to increase the depth of this to something like 60 so it's quite bulky and then I'm gonna hit C uh, I keep forgetting <laughs> this is terrible okay 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 if we go to the caps section of our extrude nerves I'm gonna go to type and put this to triangles and uh, that's just gonna give me some uh, pretty good segments all around excuse me but uh, you can see that they're all well there's a pattern here actually you can see that this section is exactly the same as this and yeah you can see the idea uh, so we need to make this more random and the way to do that might be to turn on regular grid and uh, put the width up and uh, you would think this would do it um, uh, you know, systematically all the way around and result in a mesh that looks the same but it doesn't actually so you know mess with the regular grid uh, don't have it too low otherwise you'll start to get some uniform patterns so uh, just keep that in mind and uh, when you've done that you want to hit C to make this editable and then select all of these and then connect and delete and then to make this uh, random even more go to your polygon mode right click and get the knife tool make sure that restrict to selection is not ticked and visible elements only is also not ticked and then we can start to break this apart even more by just making some cuts and uh, overall we're gonna get a pretty random look all around and uh, we can do the same here we can maybe make a cut straight down here and then just a few and as you can see that went straight through to the other side partially okay so this is alright now we have enough uh, lines and polygons to uh, break this apart and make it somewhat seem like a crystal. If you're not happy with the number of segments, you can press Ctrl A, right click, and if you go to your subdivide submenu here, you can set how many subdivisions you want. I'm only going to have one, and uh, that's enough to give me something which looks like this. So we have a lot more edges than we started off with. So I think I'm going to work with this. Um, okay so let's actually go ahead and see how we deform this we're gonna be using an effector let's go to MoGraph effector and then random and uh, by default this is not gonna affect this uh, usually right off the bat you can always affect uh, any of the MoGraph objects such as fractures matrices and uh, cloners but this is a um, polygon so you have to tweak the settings a little bit 
first of all you need to make the effector a child of your mesh and then go to the deformer tab and set the deformation from off to polygon and now you can see that it's affecting all of these polys it's too strong so let's go to the effector and put the strength way down and now you can see we're retaining our shape but uh, the surface is uh, kind of screwed up really and uh, we can't really see the surface for what it really is right now because of the fong tag so let's go in and remove the fong tag and now you can see when I do that straight away you're gonna start to get this sort of uh, um, sharp edges sticking out in some areas some of them are going inside and uh, this kind of looks like a surface of a crystal so let's um, go ahead and fix this up a little more if I go to my random effect and push this way up or maybe to something like here you may start to notice that some areas of the shape are actually completely opening up such as this right here and you can see straight through to the other side and now we don't want this, we want this to remain closed up all the way around so let's go back to that shape go to polygon mode I'm gonna right click and you wanna click optimize and when we click away and go back to our random effector you can now see that the surface is still uh, deformed and uh, random as it were before but um, you know it's also not closed up and this is great I'm gonna decrease the strength of my random effector now in fact what I can do is keep it at 100 percent go to the parameters and uh, only use low values to affect the X, Y and Z position of these polygons and you can see this is uh, okay and uh, you can also mess around with the rotation and stuff like that but I find that uh, just changing the position on its own is probably enough but you know it's up to you you can mess around with the scale too it just depends on what you wanna go for okay I'm gonna turn that off and turn that off too and uh, this is alright now the next thing we can do now is to create a texture for this so the texture is very simple uh, we're gonna just create a texture double click anywhere in the material manager and go to transparency turn that on we're gonna have a refraction of 1.5 or you can go for 2 um, and if we drop this on to that and hit render you can start to see um, where this is going and uh, some surfaces actually look a, a bit better than others uh, but this could be down to the camera angle and uh, the lighting and so on so that's a very simple way to create the material of course you can go ahead and modify this uh, I'm gonna turn on my interactive renderer by pressing AOT followed by R and let's put the quality slider all the way to the top and if I grab this material I can mess around with the settings such as the specular here I'm gonna pull this down you see the highlights are um, narrower and then I'm gonna make them brighter so push up the height and now you can see they're much uh, lighter and there's a lot more contrast we can push this out a little bit more and uh, I think this is a good look right here and uh, we can change the materials um, illumination method or model from Blin in fact no I leave it on Blin uh, Blin is good for materials with highlights and stuff like that uh, Fong is good all round and then Orenaya is good for rough surfaces so Blin is okay it calculates uh, highlights more accurately okay so this is uh, looking okay-ish of course you then go ahead and finish your lighting and all that stuff but I just wanted to show you how you create the texture itself let's go to anti-aliasing and uh, put it to best 1x1, one 4x4 one, four four, and maybe a threshold of 5% and that may just clean up some of the edges and you're gonna start to get a really uh, decent looking texture Thank <laughs> you.